It's time to take Rolly apart. If you want to see this in action, check out my previous video. Easter egg. So let's start taking this apart and see what's inside. So we're going to take out the case screws first. See what we can do about removing the outside part. There we go, that's pretty good. Especially this heavy battery cover. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's going to come off now. Oh, okay. The USB cover is holding on for dear life there. So we'll just do that. We've got some insides. You can already see a couple of motors and the power switch. And we've got some more screws to come off. So we'll keep going. Okay, so with those screws out, we're going to just very carefully disconnect there. Oh, okay, so one side. And there's the midsection. Now we've got two halves. Alright, so we'll start on the half which has the USB connector. That's a different type of screw again, so we'll just make some piles here. Okay. Okay, we're inside. And there's our Toshiba flash memory. And that's on a little daughter board sitting on top of the board. Sort of reminds me of the way the Nintendo Switch has a little separate board for its flash memory chip. One connector. I've got a nice little custom Sony chip. Another chip there, I'm not sure what that one does yet. There's a bit of a flex cable which goes in there, which will be for, I guess, the lights, the lamps, sorry. So it looks like, it looks like that is an unused connector. While we're at this point, I'm going to have a look at this board as well. Okay, we have the other half of the main board. Perhaps not as main, but we looks like we have some sort of Sony with, with a can on top, so that could be the Bluetooth. And another one of these chips that I don't know what it does. But we have another screw and we have the other side of the battery charging terminal for the dock. It looks like there's no latch, you just uh, pull on it. I always prefer the latched connectors with these ribbon cables.
that's not so bad. Okay, the only thing now really is those solder points. Okay, let's get uh, let's get these boards out. Okay, that's desoldered and pushed out. We'll get that out in a moment. We'll do the other one. We're going to have to take these connectors right out. Now, what's going to stop that board from coming out? Let's find out. That connector there needs to move out of the way. Yep. There it goes. That ribbon cable there also needs to get out of the way. Alright, so we passed both of those, but we've got a connector under there. Should be able to see that. Yep. One. Two. Not bad. And we have the board out. So there it is. There's one side. This is the right side. We're going to keep going with this other board. There's the connector inside. Quite easy to remove. Shouldn't be too hard to get that back in. So we're all unplugged. And we have the left board out. And we've got a backup battery. And now we've got these two. And not a whole lot of information telling me how this would come apart. Okay, so I've had a bit of a break coming back with a, a fresh perspective and I was having a peek at these and you know, I reckon they're completely interchangeable and you could swap left for right. They seem to have uh, design them for that sort of efficiency which is really interesting. The other thing I noticed is if I lift up the cover manually yeah, there they are two hidden screws well I didn't see them before so we can continue to take this apart uh, but first also while I was having a break I did a little bit of a look online and I found this really interesting diagram of the chips then we can have a close-up look at the boards and this is the well I mean they're both the main board it's a split main board Bluetooth of course Texas Instruments ultra low power microcontroller. Um, there's four freescale microcontrollers, two on each board. This is a Wolfson microelectronics motor controller. So that's uh, that one there. The other board 
that custom Sony chip is listed as an audio decoder and next to it is expansion flash memory and RAM chip so that's probably holding the operating system and a bit of RAM for the controller two freescale microcontrollers okay so it's time to continue with disassembly so we're going to take those two screws out and that comes off pretty easily so we can get to the screws I'm just going to keep teasing this apart slowly there we go, there we go that's not bad there it is Okay, further into the breach we go. So we've got the speaker cone. We've got some more motors there. Sorry, a, a motor and a gearing system and some more screws. Whoa. Okay, speaker. We'll have a peek underneath this foam. It's stuck down pretty well. Hmm. I guess we'll remove some more screws and see what happens. I'm not going to take that off, but maybe we can peek into this board. Yeah, we can. So, so I think I actually want to go further into this one. Okay, lots of pieces. Right, we're in trouble now. We're in trouble because we've got a gearing system. Looks like it wouldn't mind some silicon grease on it. And a couple of pieces have come out. Fortunately we have a reference one. If we need to work out how to put them back, we can go into there. But let's have a closer look, see what uh, we've done. Okay, that's pretty greasy. They seem to move pretty well now. Okay, now we're going to put uh, we're going to put these pieces back in.
Oh, it's lit, lit up. It's on Bluetooth mode. 